Mount Zion. Put those hands together. Good morning. Oh, well, I'm saying good morning. <laughs> good evening, everybody. Um, uh, for those of you all who are worshiping with us online, I want to say uh, hello uh, to um, Brother Irvin for hanging out with me tonight. I uh, appreciate him and his consistency. This is Sister Emma, Sister Stephanie, I see you uh, as we gather here this evening for Bible study. Um, Cool day today, just to kind of give everybody an update. Uh, today we had Commonwealth Edison was with us today. Um, and so for those of you all who know um, here uh, at the church that we're about to embark on a construction project uh, as we get ready to put air conditioning upstairs in the, um, in the sanctuary, uh, they were here kind of documenting the process. So it was cool today to be able to sit uh, with some folks who have been at this church for a very long time. And um, so uh, Ms. Zelma Jarvis was with us and Will and Dr. Hurd and a couple other people. But um, to kind of hear some of their stories, uh, it was cool. Uh, Brother Irvin, um, Ms. Zelma has an autograph uh, program from uh, the last time that Dr. King spoke here and has his uh, Dr. King's autograph. So that was pretty cool uh, to be able to see that. And um, she trusted me enough to let me hold on to some of that stuff so I could scan it and make sure that we uh, could hold on to it and have it for as we move forward. I also saw this, uh, um, when they did the photographs when I was a teenager and um, you know some of those photos and I saw myself with hair, man, with hair and hair, um, but not anymore. Uh, so that was that was cool. They'll be back a couple more times as they kind of document the whole process. And um, I'm, I'm appreciative of the opportunity to be able to be uh, here in this place. Um, I don't have a handout today because um, today was so uh, busy, busy, busy. But um, today what we'll be talking about, we'll go to we're still in the book of Psalms. Um, we'll go to Psalm 62. I believe I'm in today. Psalm 62, verses 1 through 12. Um, and so today we'll study managing, still managing our emotions, but uh, we'll study contentment. And uh, when your soul is at rest, learning to find serenity regardless of your circumstances. Um, so that's where we are, that's where we'll be. Um, let's pray. God, we love you, we honor and adore you, we bless you, magnify your holy name. We thank you for uh, this day, 
Uh, we thank you for your love, caring, your kindness. We thank you for all that you're doing um, in this place and in the lives of your people. I'm asking God that you would bless those that are gathered here in the room and those who are in our virtual uh, Bible study room as we uh, learn together what you would have us to do related to our emotions and trying to find contentment. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, so today our current issue is kind of trying to figure out what is contentment and how do we find it. Um, contentment is said to be uh, that uh, is a condition where our soul is at rest regardless of our circumstances. It's, it's weird um, when they use the term, using the term when our soul is at rest, right? It sounds like there's a funeral that's about to happen, but really um, it's about finding and holding on to contentment. I'll read um, Psalm 62, two verses 1 through 12. Um, this is from the New International Version. It says this, truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from God. Truly God is my rock and my salvation. God is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but their hearts they curse. Um, yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from God. Truly, God is my rock and my salvation. God is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Uh, my salvation and my honor depend on God. God is my rock and my refuge. Trust in God at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to God, for God is our refuge. Surely the lowborn are but a breath, the highborn are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they are only a breath. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your riches increase, um, do not, hello, do not set your heart on them. Uh, one thing God has spoken, two things I've heard. Um, power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love and your reward uh, and you reward everyone according to what they have done. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Again, that's Psalm 62 um, in its entirety. That's verses 1 through 12. Um, so today um, we are um, talking about contentment, how to, how to be at peace <clears throat> with our lives, with ourselves, with God. Uh, and here uh, we'll look to David for um, some help as to how we figure all of that out. Um, serenity or contentment is something that we all long for, uh, we all desire, but it's very hard, uh, a difficult thing to find. Uh, because in reality, if you and I were to be honest, we're restless people. Uh, we want things fast. We want things to happen quickly. Uh, we don't like to wait. Um, you know, that's all of us. It did, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm not saying it's you or me. Um, I would say it's all of us that we don't want to wait for things. We want things to happen quickly. And so um, sometimes because we're restless people, we have this inner longing. The, the desire for the th that particular thing uh, makes us feel con discontent. Like we, we're searching for something. We start with, you, you know, there's a it's it's um, there's times in our lives where we always feel like we're searching, 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 and looking for something, only that it never really happens uh, for us. And it definitely doesn't happen as quick as we would like it to. And so when you think about contentment, uh, it's a condition in which our soul has found uh, rest, regardless of what our circumstances are. Um, the ability to kind of move through this and that without having difficulty, uh, and as uh, circumstances pop or situations happen, then you know, we're able to kind of keep moving and be even keel um, regardless of what that situation is. It's, it's the idea that we, don't, we aren't striving, our soul isn't striving for something that it doesn't have, and contentment is, a, is the kind of peace that persists in both good and bad times, right? Um, and so sometimes when we're facing difficulties, when we're facing trouble, um, it, 
um, you got to fight to be content of, in life. Like you have to fight to be okay. You got to fight to find um, peace and contentment. You got to search after that thing. You got to chase after it. And unfortunately, uh, it's it's still a difficult thing to do, regardless of who you are, right? Um, so if we think about Psalm 62, right? Um, it's attributed to King David. Most of it we see there is some issue. Like every time we talk about David, David, David will walk through all of his stuff. I like David because David is out there. David will say, this is how I'm feeling today. And but David also always circles back to the Lord, uh, which I can definitely appreciate. So if we think about so this is the first thing I want us to get that we'll find contentment by looking to God instead of our own circumstances. Um, and so if we look to one through four, uh, we can hear God. Um, I mean, David talk about that. My first one, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from God. That God is my rock and my salvation. That God is my fortress. That I will never be shaken. It almost sounds like David is like giving himself a pep talk, right? Um, because in three, he talks about how I'm dealing with some stuff and dealing with some trouble. That he talks about the stuff that he's that's bothering him at this particular point. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw throw me down this leaning leaning wall, this tottering fence? Surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies, and they take delight in lies, and with their mouths they bless, but with their heart they curse. Right. So, um, in this instance, one of the things that's important is that the Hebrew word word for rest in this particular passage means silence or stillness. Right. David finds his soul for rest in God alone because of his circumstances are unreliable. God is immovable as a rock and protecting as a fortress. So David is confident that he won't be shaken. David finds that his circumstances are not to be trusted uh, to provide contentment. So instead, David looks to God who made him, that God is his only source of contentment. And in God alone, uh, we find rest for our souls. Um we know here that like David had a, has a he David is a David is a tricky character in the Bible. I remember being in seminary we we took a class I took a class specifically on King David and um and 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 the story and so a lot of people miss the fact that the kings and um, the book of Kings, first Kings, second Kings, they're, they're not in chronological order. The story is like flicked and twisted, right? It reads like Goodfellas. Like, have you ever watched Goodfellas? You watch some of those gangster movies? You ever watch those gangster movies back in the day? Goodfellas or Scarface or one of those? Yeah, so it reads like one of those, right? Because of all the stuff that's happening. In this, in the particular story, but um, I have to get the exact, the actual um, way that all of it. Hey, honey, that all of it um, spills out. But in reality, um, it's not. It's not in chronological order. So what we see here from David is that David is dealing with some issues, and David is dealing with folks that they don't. They don't trust him. They don't like him. They, you know, everybody's got an issue with him, and so he's dealing with some 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 struggle and some circumstance at that particular time. Um, let me see. So in that first point, right, we talk about looking to God for our contentment, that you can't really um, look to the world, right? The world will let you down all the time. The world will let you down. It'll, um, I don't know if it's just me, but sometimes when I, when I feel like I'm doing like my absolute best, something will always pop up to try to knock me over again. And um, I have to focus on not letting it bother me and being okay with whatever that situation or circumstance is because it's only temporary. Um, yesterday, I was driving. I had dropped Jayla off at school, and um, I went the long way because uh, I wanted, I was hungry, and I knew I was going to have a long day, so I went to Chick-fil-A and got the chicken minis. Those are 
pretty good, right? <laughs> if you go to the right place. If you go to the wrong place, they're not really, they don't taste that good because they kind of feel old. But so I went to State and Lake, and as I was coming back out, I rode down Michigan Avenue to come home. And I get to, I don't know if that's 11, no, I don't know if that's 8th or 9th. But anyway, they're doing construction on the building. So there's um, some uh, concrete blocks that are in the street, and there's a fence. And so it's still two lanes instead of four or three, however many lanes Michigan is, Michigan Avenue is done when you get towards a park, right? I think it's like four, three or four lanes, but they cut it to two. And then the one that's closest to the building, there's a concrete block in front of it. So as I approach the light, I'm in the very right lane. I'm next to the concrete block. There isn't much room. I got to stay, like, I got to watch the cars next to me. I got to watch the concrete block. And then, Brother Irvin, this, this guy decides that he wants to walk down the street. And so instead of walking down the street on the sidewalk, he comes and he's walking Really, I can't go. Like, he's standing right in front of me. And then he has the nerve to walk up to my car and tell me and, and do like this to get me to move over. Now, as cars behind me, it's like eight cars behind me. You got a bus, a big old, my wife hates these, the big old accordion bus, the big long accordion bus. And you got all these other cars, and there's nowhere to go. So I'm sitting there, and I'm an inch from losing it because... Like, this makes absolutely no sense. Like, bro, you're in the street, and I, I need to go forward, and I got all these people behind me, folks starting to honk, um, and I, and he, told, he basically told me, move over. And there was nowhere for me to go. And like, bro, you cross over, get, get, on, the, um, get on the east side, closer to the park. There's tons of um, sidewalk, and you can walk over there and not have any issues, but he, he was... He was coming at me. So he was literally, half of my truck was half of his body. And I just had to sit there. And I could have I could have yelled at him, but clearly it wouldn't matter what I said to him. It didn't matter because he was already had in his head what he was going to do, where he was going to go, and I just had to deal with it. So I was sitting there, and I was like, man. And then I, I felt myself, you know, you feel yourself kind of, you, you, you're getting hot, you're getting upset, and it's rising. And you could, there's a point where you're top of pop, right? And I had to go. I kind of did one of these numbers. I just grabbed the steering wheel and kind of dropped down a little bit and just took a deep breath. And there was nowhere for me to go, right? And so I think far too often, all of the, circum all the things we face during the day um, can build up. And build up and build up and build up, and then you pop. Because you've just been holding and su suppressing things all day long, when in reality, um, you have to be able to talk about things. You have to be able to um, compartmentalize stuff. you got to be able to, um, to, to really pay attention to some things and not to other things. And I had to take a deep breath and go, I can't move this guy out the way. He's not going to move, and I got to wait till everybody goes so I can get over and go where I'm going. I'm not late for anything. I'm not rushing. This doesn't make sense, but I'm, I'm going to choose to chill out, right? And you got to do that, and you got to look to – and when it, when it comes to bigger stuff, then you always got to always, 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 like, look to God – to and remember what God has done for you so that you don't um pop your top and if I was if I yelled at him I would have he would have looked silly for standing in the street but I would have looked silly for yelling at him because he wasn't gonna move and nine and a half times out of ten it would have mess it would have upset him and he would have been yelling back at me and then I still don't get the I still don't get to go where I'm trying to go um second point we got to uh, find another way to find contentment is to choose to trust in God, right? To choose to trust in God. So this is um, five through eight, right? Even though in four, David talks about all the stuff he's going through. In five, he goes, yep, my soul finds rest in God. 
My hope comes from God. Truly, God is my rock and my salvation. God is my fortress. I will not be shaken. You, sometimes you got to tell yourself that. I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. I understand they're coming for me. I understand they're trying to set me up. It feels like this is a setup, but I won't be shaken. And then um, David goes on to say, my salvation and my honor depend on God because God is my rock and my refuge, right? So between five and seven, he says that God is his true rock. And then he says, God is my mighty rock. And then um, he calls God his salvation. He calls God his refuge. He calls God his fortress. He says that my hope comes from the Lord and that my silence or my peace comes from God, too. And then he goes on from talking about what God has done for him or what how he sees God in his personal life. Then he goes on to admonish the other folks. And he says, trust in God at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to God, for God is our refuge, right? David, the king, says, it's not just about me. That God really cares about you, too. And you have to understand, and you got to know that. Um, David says he only finds rest in God. He commands himself to rest in God in verse 5. Um, and, and, you know, the reality of it is one moment we could be where we need to be, but the next moment we're struggling. Right. Life is this it's ebbs and flows. It's this um, continuum. And sometimes things are cool. And sometimes, you know, somebody can ask you, hey, man, how you doing? Every time I see Brother Irvin, he asks me how I'm doing. He asks me how you doing. He asks me how Miles is doing. He, uh, he asks me how your foot is doing. And he asks me about my Achilles. Right. And most of the for the last couple of weeks, every time I've seen Irvin, I've been able to say, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But as but, but between yesterday and today, I had some soreness in my Achilles. Cause why? I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. I didn't wear my brace. So that's my fault. I wasn't feeling. I, I I was starting to have some soreness. Cause I should just keep wearing my brace. But you know, I was tired of wearing my brace, and I felt like things were gonna be okay. And I think we all do that, right? There's some things that you do do from day to day that protect you from danger, from hurt, harm. And sometimes we let our guard down. And then when we let our guard down, we allow pain to come and grab us again. And then in reality, it's really our fault because we it ain't what they call you. It's what you answer to, right? And so sometimes you let people in too close that you knew you shouldn't have given any space in the first place, that you revert back because you're like, oh, it'll be all right. But no, nah, you you got to you gotta, you gotta keep holding on, and, right? Because she says, hang in there. You got to hang in there. Um, in this instance, right, the Hebrew, Hebrew word for trust means strictly to rely on God. And um, if we think about... Um, the way relationship children have with their parents, right? That uh, no matter what, no matter what Jayla asks me and Lady Sherelle for, she already believes she's going to get it um, from jump. Because uh, some of the stuff she asks for, you'd be like, girl, why would you even, why would you even say something like that? What, you, why do you think you, you supposed to get that? What she said the other day? So, I'm, you can tell I told her, I tell it too. So, Jayla's 17. She'll be 18 in December. She'll be a senior. Um, they were looking at, you know, all the prom photos on Instagram and everywhere now, TikTok and all that stuff. And she laughing because she know what I'm about to say. And and um, Jayla's like, oh, so-and-so ate, right? For those of us a little bit older, eating means that you look really good or you you took, you did that. Like you you handled that moment or you you, you absolutely did your thing. Um, Jayla goes, I can't wait till senior prime. I can see myself standing in front of the double R. Double R? So if you don't know what a double R, that's a Rolls Royce. And I said, what? And I turned the radio up. And then Jayla goes, well, I'm not saying y'all got to buy one. Like, what? Why are we talking about a Rolls Royce? To take pictures in front of? Like, so, but I, I say that to say, huh? You're all right. She's like, you could rent it. And, and, and then so I said to, to Lady Sherelle, I said, well, if I'm a rent, if I'm renting it, Jayla not driving it. I said, so we going to prom. I'm going to be the one. If I got, if I'm being the Rolls Royce, I'm going to be in the Rolls Royce. You go sit in the back and I'll take you wherever you got to go. But just to, 
I said all of that to say that she has this like this absolute trust that everything's going to be okay. That whatever she asks for, that she's going to get because um, that's the relationship she has with us that typically when if she's doing what she's supposed to do, she can count that we're going to we're going to look out for her and take care of her. Right now, she talking about she talking about mommy, um, uh, Mr. Trey going to make chicken wings for me. I, I don't even, there aren't any even chicken there aren't even chicken wings in the refrigerator. I didn't even buy chicken wings yesterday, but because she mentioned chicken wings yesterday and I told her I couldn't I wasn't going to cook them yesterday cuz I was cooking something else, that baby automatically assumed that we have chicken wings tonight. And some of us got to have that kind of confidence in God, right? That, that I asked for it, God going to give it to me. God going to look out for me, you know, and and you we just don't do that. Unfortunately, we don't trust God that way um, because there's so many things that come at us from this way and that way. And we're we got to fight not to you. You and I, we have to we have to fight not to allow uh, what we see in front of us to stop us from going where we need to go or doing what we need to do or believing what we need to believe. But, you know, one of the things that's, that we have to be mindful of is that. In order to really be a Christian, you got to have some disbelief. Right? There's a there's, that's faith, right? There's a there's a moment where in your brain you go, "Mm, that might not work." And then the 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 portion of us that goes, "No, nah, if God said it, it's going to be okay." And and that's what makes us a Christian cuz we believe that what Christ said um, is going to come to pass, and we believe what Christ did was sufficient for all of us. And so, you can't beat you up, beat yourself up if you have like a moment where you're not really, you don't really believe, or you can't beat yourself up when you have a moment where things might not be um, the the way you you think they should be. Um, it's okay to have, ask questions, and it's okay to wonder. Uh, but the the true test of a Christian is to have questions, wonder, and but to still keep moving, right? To still keep pushing, to still keep um, going and relying on what God said that God would do. Um, let me see. Point three. Moving fast today. I think I'm tired. Uh, I didn't even put two up. See, the folks on the internet are like Pastor Troy, you're not even, you're not even paying attention to us. Um, so point two was we find contentment in God by choosing to trust God. And that was in, uh, 62, five through eight. And then here's the third one I want to give you tonight. We find contentment by pursuing a life of integrity. That's 62, nine through 10. Uh, let me read that. Surely the low born are but a breath, the high born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together, they're only a breath. Do not trust in extortion uh, or put extortion, I'm sorry, or put vain hope in stolen goods. Though your, though your riches increase, do not set your, your heart on them. Um, David, David is really saying that if you're rich or if you're poor, that really in, in the grand scheme of things, we're the same. That our lives are the same, that no, what we do from day to day, you know, as a rich person versus being if somebody is challenged uh, financially, you may have um, different things. But at the end of the day, in, at our core, um, that we're essentially um, the same folks, that each of our lives um, is is what we make it. And we shouldn't put stock in our or or credence or um we shouldn't put heavy uh, importance in our circumstances or our wealth because once you do that, then um, God isn't God anymore. Now your, your money is God. Uh, rather than uh, focus on wealth, we should live lives of integrity. And integrity is a consistency between what we say and what we do, right? It's that doing the right thing even when nobody's looking because it's the right thing to do. And, you know, we don't, I don't have to run the list down and I don't have to try to convince anybody that whether you're rich or whether you have some challenges that 
um, life can still be difficult, right? If you look at all the people who got tons of money, who don't make it because they're not happy, or don't make it because um, they, they, don't, they don't feel good about um, their lives, or they live lonely lives, right? Money can't buy you happiness. It can, it can, um, it can put you in places that might give you some sort of ha happiness from time to time and some contentment. But in reality, um, when we think about it, the truth is that regardless of who we are, um, you don't. You can have less money than the next person, but still have a better quality of life because of what you, of how you live, right? Um, I remember my mother would always tell me she was like, "Well, she didn't know what they didn't have, because it felt like they had everything, even though she lived in the country, even though they had well water, even though the house was on stilts, even though they were, you know." She had to do, she had to cook, she had to do everything and learn all these things. I'm the same way. As a kid, I don't really remember not, like, I didn't know what I didn't have compared to other people, right? Um, you could, I could sit there and look at what other folks did have, right? But the, the reality of it is that even in all of your circumstances, um, the the test and the, or the the aim should always be to be able to live a life filled with integrity, right? When I when I asked Lady Sherelle to marry me, when I think about marriage, one of the things that's important to me is like I I don't ever want to be underneath the viaduct having some difficulty, but I want to be with somebody who would love me enough to be under the viaduct if we ended up under the viaduct, you know? And I wanted to love somebody that same way. I don't, I'm a, I'm a fight not to ever be under the viaduct having, needing, needing help, but that's, that's what I want is that, you know what? Whatever we facing, we'll be all right. And, you know, and, and I try to encourage Jayla that way and I try to, you know, live my life that way that, um, that as opportunities come, we take advantage of them um, in a good way and that we can, you know, walk through life and be okay. Um, oh, I did put it up that time. And then... Michelle online says, says um, my cousin, she says, happiness is being true to yourself and others to spend the time with loved ones who are true and love you most too. I agree. Because um, I, I remember during the pandemic, some people was traveling, like some people was going somewhere, but, but we had a good time. Um, Ben's watching movies and um, Sherelle would get a charcuterie board. I didn't even know what that was. With all the cheese and, and like different fruit and stuff. And when the verses came on, remember you had the um you had your whole little setup with the the speaker and we kind of sat around the table and tried to do some of that stuff. So um it really is about how um how you how we take care of each other, how we, you know, how you move forward in life. Um the f number four, we find contentment by understanding God's character. Um, I'll read it for you, but David, David in, si in 62, 11, and 12, David focuses on God's strength. He focuses on God's unlimited power. He also calls attention to God's love, to God's uh, loyal faithfulness, to God's promises, and um, realizes that it takes an understanding of both God's power and God's love to get a picture of what God is really like. Otherwise, God will literally just become like a tyrant or like Santa Claus. But the more we understand about God, the more content we will be, right? Um, I talked to somebody today that um, they were looking for an apartment. They couldn't find an apartment. Um, they got an extension from where they lived at, and they, and they were looking, and they were going to be, um, they said, uh, they told me they were going to be homeless on, on June 1st. Called me today screaming because they got an apartment. When they called me today screaming about this apartment that they got, um, the first thing they said was, 
that when I got denied, that everything that was in my denial, that God made a way um, at this particular time, that um, I got the, I, we got central air, right? Super happy about it. We have, so I said, y'all didn't have central air in the last place? And, and, and they were like, nope. When it was so hot in there, right? And then said, and we got a washer and dryer unit in the, in the apartment. And we, praise the Lord, we don't have to pay uh, money to go wash clothes, right? And um, that, in, that in the denial that God still, right? God uses, sometimes, sometimes it's like, God, why are you, why are you taking so long? Right? I'm, just, I'm just being honest. Like, God, why are you taking so long? I can remember being a pastor in Florida and being in the country and saying, man, I'm not a country boy. Why am I out here in the woods? I don't, I, I, who, I, I, I don't have, I, I got the wrong people around me. If I'm in the woods, I shouldn't be in the woods. I should be able to be somewhere else. I'm from the city. Um, part of why I moved back to, why I moved back to Florida after seminary was because I was like, I don't want to go past that Iowa. I got no, no problems with Iowa, but I don't, mm, I don't know if that's what I really want for my life, and so I figured if I if I was in South Florida, I could I could drive wherever I needed to go and still be able to pastor and get back to some city, and um, I used to always go, God, why are you taking so long? Why why why, why how come what, I'm not doing the right things? I'm not I'm not in the right place. I'm not, uh, and in my brain I'm like I'm I'm trying to do all the right stuff, and then I would see God and I go I see God. Seemed like God was blessing other people, and I'm like, well, God, I could use, I could use that blessing, you know. Why don't you send some of that this way? And I used to joke with folks, and so as somebody got blessed, I used to joke with people on the bike. Come here, um, here, uh, let me let me rub your 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 Bible, let me rub your shoulder right quick. Get get some of that on me, whatever, however the God God is blessing you, it spill over on me. And we talk about that, right? And we say. God is busy pouring blessings out the window, windows of heaven. And if you ain't getting blessed, you might be under the wrong window. All those catchy, catchy phrases. But at the end of the day, um, you and I have to still like deal with the fact that it feels like God isn't like looking out for us. And that's a hard place to be in. And um, there was many a day, I'll say, when I was pastoring in the country where I was working two jobs and a third one if I could um, that I ain't have money to put in my gas tank and I remember I the, I had a I had a member I don't think you ever met uh brother King in Moorhaven brother King would come to me some days after I was leaving church after Ir- Irvin I had driven an hour and a half to Bible study after working all day long sitting in traffic and um we'll get to Bible study and was nobody there and they all live in a little town. And I drove an hour and a half to get to church to go to Bible study. And um, he would come to me and say, Pastor, you got, you got, no, you got gas money to get home? And I said, Brother Irvin, I, I, said, I said, Brother King, I could use a couple of dollars. And he would, here, and hand me something, shake my hand, and hand me something. Um, and I would go straight to the gas station and would have enough gas to get back home and be able to get up in the morning and go go to work. Um, I used to drive down that dark road wondering, Lord, why you got me out here? What what is what am I supposed to be learning out here? Why why am I in the midst of this situation? And then I would look at somebody else um, who because of the blood that's running through their veins, right? Their family will be blessed in a different way. And I'm like, you know, that's not fair. And um God had to remind me that um, everybody, everybody's journey is theirs and um, that God didn't really, that God has a way of using uh, every situation that we find ourselves in to make us better. It doesn't mean that God put us in those situations um, all the time, but sometimes it means that even in the situation that you find yourself in because somebody made a bad decision somewhere, that God still has a way of shifting things um, on your behalf. And in a, real, in a real sense, when you get that, like when you understand that um, my timeline isn't everybody's timeline, 
You know, I was bad when I was in seminary. I I used to um, I used to be mad because I'd be like, I want to preach like T.D. Jakes. And I hadn't thought about the fact that he had been preaching for 45 years and I just started. Well, I shouldn't be preaching like T.D. Jakes right now because my mama talks about how he was preaching in the tent um, on the side of the road because he had no church. Right. And so I got to look at and I got a friend now. Um, you might not have seen this, sweetheart. Um, Pastor Marcus Davidson, he preached for us last year during Lent. He can preach. And some days I'll be like, man. I'm gonna close a sermon like like Marcus some days, but Marcus, me and Marcus the same age, but he's been preaching for thirty years. I I, ain't, I haven't spent the same time, right, that, as he has. Yeah, what's up, Irvin? I haven't preached the same length of time that he has, so how dare me compare my journey to his, cause. I still got ways to go, right? I accepted my call in 2008, right? I don't even know 30 years ago was when, um, 92? Yeah, 92. Man, I was in, I was, I, I was, I was in high school. I was a, I was a junior, a sophomore in high school. And he was pastor. I mean, he wasn't pastor, but he was preaching. So how do I compare myself to something I started when I was 33. He had he he had he had a bunch of time on me. Yep. I, so just so when I, I remember when I was in seminary, just just his just the level of confidence, right? He would walk in the room and start breathing, and people falling out, and I'm like, well, why? Well, why? I think I'm I I I I got a I crack a couple jokes, and I can say this, and I can say that. But when I got when it came time for me to preach. Uh, I wasn't confident because I had just started. So I wasn't confident about everything. I would fumble over my words sometimes. Um, I remember my preaching professor, she would go, she would she would mark up my sermons and, and like my thoughts weren't um, succinct and down the line and, and in a row, right? So now, like I have, I have some people that I look up to pastorally, like Reverend Dr. Freddie Haynes in, in Dallas, Texas. He is a... Uh, him and like Marcus Cosby, I could name a couple people that, but they've been preaching for a long time. When 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 uh, when when uh, Freddie Haynes gets up, he pick his phone up, he walk up to the pulpit, he read the passage of scripture, put the phone down, and preach for thirty minutes, and, and everybody running around the room shouting, carrying on, and you know sometimes, sometimes I. Sometimes I trail off. Y'all stay with me, but sometimes I trail off, or I might give an extra example that I don't need to give, right? Because, cause in my, um, I'm, I would still say, you know, compared to T.D. Jakes, who've been pat, preaching the pastor for fifty some years, I'm still in my adolescent phase. So where his thought process is, because he's been doing it so long, right? Like Irvin, you you don't live too far away. Um, when you when you you walk a lot, when you walk your your um the same you you probably walk the same exact way to the church every time. Maybe you change a little bit. You might you might take another block on one day or another one on this way, but you never taken you never gone a path that you haven't gone already. Like you like you know what's happening. When you get to a certain place, you know what's going on. If something is different. While you're walking, you will recognize that it's different because you've been walking that path for so long. And so for me, um, I didn't I didn't realize that. Like I was, I remember Pastor Moody had us on a, we were on a fast and we couldn't, it was during basketball season, March Madness. He was like, we're not going, we're not going to watch TV. Y'all know Elder Moody. We're not going to watch, you're not going to watch anything. We're going we're gonna to just immerse ourselves in Christian content. So I was watching like the Word Network or something. So I was watching all, and this was, this was, this was 2009, 10, before YouTube was like really, really large. So I'm just watching the Word Network. I cheated a little bit. I was watching first Sunday. I figured that was kind of close to God, even though it wasn't. <laughs> so with Cat Williams and Ice Cube, I mean, with I, yeah, with all of them. But um, you know, we do that. Um, y'all, everybody does it, right? As you walk through um, whatever your wherever God has you, and it's not 
you're not trying to like knock yourself, but some of it I think is aspiration. Right? For me, it's like, you know, you aspire. We talked about it earlier at the beginning, right? How do you find contentment? And it's that idea that I was anxious to, to, to be a better preacher, but I didn't spend the time to do it. And so in my heart, I was, uh, my heart was, um, wasn't, wasn't good because I was like trying to seek after something that I wasn't really prepared for. And it almost made me look at what uh, my gifts are and go, that's not good enough compared to this person. But I shouldn't be comparing myself to, you know, somebody else in that way. And I had to learn that that wasn't really, that that wasn't good. You know, the most critical moment for me as I walk through is on Sunday mornings, right? On Sunday mornings or Sunday Sunday afternoons after the sermon is over, I start to replay it. You know, I never watch them. I never go back and watch it on, on Facebook or YouTube because I'm going to be too critical on myself. But then I replay it in my head and I'm like, man, I should have said this. Or, man, when I got to this point, I could have said that. And... And then I'll beat myself up. And then sometimes y'all spoil me. Sometimes y'all send me text messages and be like, Pastor, that was good today. And then some days y'all don't send me a text message. So then my brain, I'm like, was that not good? Because I got the text last time it was good. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, too. But could that be Satan playing all stuff? It could be. It could be. I, I mean, I think, so for those of y'all, Online, um, Brother Irvin said, well, couldn't that be Satan? Um, it could be. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, right, Satan Satan um, knows Scripture. Uh, when you look at his encounter with Jesus, when he took him up to the mountaintop, like he didn't tell him anything he didn't already know. He was, he was reciting Scripture to Jesus to try to get him to either fold or bend or break or to say, yeah, right? He's like, everything you could see, you could have. Well, why would Jesus take everything he could see when Jesus knew that his father owned was, it really belonged to, everything belonged to his father. So why would I, so if I'm Jesus, why would I take what I can see? Because um, what what my dad, what my father owns is is deeper, wider, and longer than I could see. Right, so there there are I, there are moments where um, the enemy might creep in and say you're not good enough. You know, some of that is from I would, I believe from the enemy. Now the test though is that when when you hear those things or when you hear um, you know doubt and things like that creep in, at the same time you got to then be able to. Um, not necessarily recite scripture. It'd be cool if you could, but everybody's not that well ver as well versed as others are. But you have to remember what promises God um, told you that God was going to give you, and so that's why it's important to remember. So you can't tell everybody what God told you about you specifically, but you also have to remember what God told you. Like so, when I was in seminary, I had a fleeting thought. What if you became Pastor Quinn Chapel? But I was like, nah, 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 I'm going to, I'm going back to Florida, blah, 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 and then it came to pass, right? So some of that is learning to listen for God's voice. Some of it is for, is to pay attention to God's promises that God has placed over your life. Um, there's things that are residing each and each of you. Everybody under the sound of my voice that we have literally gone, mm -mm, I can't do that. And God is like, well, I put it in there for you so you would you could you could find it. And when you when you when it when it poked out at you and when it tried to reveal itself, you, you said no. And we got to do our best not to be our own worst enemy and to not believe enough of ourselves. Right. And so the enemy will try to try to knock you down and make you feel like, nah, you're not you you're not you're not that good, you're not worthy of that, right? And then I can remember when I got here too. When I got here, and I got the appointment, 
I had a phone call from a pastor on the district and was like, man, who you know? What you mean? Who do I know? I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do nothing out of the ordinary. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't put myself in a bad position to be here. Um, I ain't pay nobody off, right? Don't nobody owe me nothing. I don't owe nobody a favor, right? We think about, uh, you know, all of the things that the, that the world says that we would have to do to be able to be like in this space. Right? I had a bishop say to me, he said, man, what you up to now? I said, I'm the pastor at Quint Chapel. He said, in Chicago? I said, yeah. He said, how you do that? And I didn't take offense to, uh, to it. I said, man, it must have been the Lord. And we both laughed about it because I know his personality, right? Some people try to try to kick you when they get the opportunity. But everybody not trying to kick you, even when they ask you questions that, if you perceive it wrong, could feel like a kick. And so you just got to understand that. You know, what God has for you is for you, no matter who you are, no matter what you've been through, no matter what they said you couldn't do. And you got to find contentment in um, in the Lord. I might not be there yet, but I'm on the way. I might not be there yet, but that's what God told me. I might not, um, it might not look like I could do it, but I'm going to be there. I remember when we, when we looked at, when we looked at the place we live at now, um, I was like, I was like, baby, I don't know. She was like, nope, the Lord said, the Lord told me this is it. And I said, well, okay, if you say so. I was like, because I don't know. You know, because you know how it is in Chicago. They want first um, They want first security. They want uh, your firstborn. They want your grandkids. You got to make $9 million over whatever to rent it. Like, it's like the, the stipulations to have, being in a, a place in Chicago are outrageous. And I was like, ooh, baby, I don't know. And she was like, nope, the Lord said. And I was like, well, I guess if you and God talked about it, I just got to be okay because you said we, all right, where, you, where I need to sign. And, and here go, here go, uh, here go this support, here go the money that we got to turn in. And sure enough, they called us back and was like, y'all got in, you just got to do one thing. But that was, the one thing was easy. And it was like, oh, that's it. You know, and in my brain, I was like, where are we going to live at, Lord? Um, but you got to be, you know, you got to be confident in the Lord. You got to be confident, understand, and find your place of contentment. Find your place that, you know, you understand what God has for you is for you. You know, one of the things I'm learning as I, so October will make a year, right, as the pastor of this church. But one of the things that I'm, uh, I'm starting to observe is that, and I think this is for all of us, right? Sometimes when you walk, when you're walking in something that God actually, did, you'll start to see that God prepared you for it while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Even when you second guess yourself and you're like, I don't know if I should, how do I do this, right? I sound like um, Bishop Stafford Wicker. How do you do that, right? I was the same way. And as I start to walk, like God will literally, God has sent me, God sent me three people in one day that told me the same thing and told me I needed to step out f forward and I needed to like take a step out and to be like a leader, not just in this church, but in the city. And then I said, I heard it from one person. They were like, hey, Pastor, I see you. I see you in the back. Right? And then the next person, same place, within 20 minutes of each other, the next person said, um, hey, man, you and so-and-so, y'all got to step forward. You can't, be, you, you can't be in the back. You got to be out front. Then this little old lady who slapped me on my head after she, when she prayed for me, she told me that I need to step forward and that people are going to be like, how did all this happen while you were there? And she, she said, it's because of the Lord. And then she said, now let me pray for you. And she started praying, slapped me on the head, and no lie. And so now as I'm like, I asked Lady Sherelle last week or the week before, I was in four different meetings or four different functions. I had to go to four different, I had to go to the Dusabo Museum because somebody running for something. I went um, somewhere else because somebody running for something. Commissioner Bill Lowry wanted me to come to something. We had something here. 
Uh, and so, and then everywhere I go, people are like, yep, and there's, there's Pastor Troy from Quinn Chapel. And I'm like, why y'all calling me? Like, and then Commission Lowry asked me to close his meeting out in prayer. And the room had just erupted. And this man was mad because he said, y'all got to spend more money and, and invest more money in, in, in the, in the uh, activities. And like you got a football field over here, you need to put, put a football field over here. And y'all not doing this and y'all not doing that. And there was tension in the room. And, I had, and they asked me to close the meeting out. So now I get up, now I gotta, now I gotta, hey, hey, everybody take a deep breath. Man, you're right. I feel you. The Lord says that we should be right, we should be angry about the right stuff. And I'm like, yeah, and y'all doing the best you can right now, but you gotta keep pushing. And I had to like pull the room together to then be able to be in a spot where we could pray and then leave together. But um it was like God was like, you you got this. And it, it works both ways, right? As you become more confident in God, you realize that God was really confident in you in the first place. And that as God trusts you and as God has confidence in you, then, you know, you can literally, like the Bible says, do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And you got to be, you got to be brave. And, you, and there's times where you, you got to have a spot where you can go sit in the corner and be like, you know, be like David, I'm tired of this. But then don't stay in the corner. Get up and keep going. And in reality, as you move forward, God will be with you and um, show you that God has been with you the whole time. Even when the enemy, Brother Irvin, does pop up and try to use your stuff against you, try to use the your feelings against you, tries to use, um, you know, your – we all have insecurities, all right? Try to use your insecurities against you, try to make you feel – um, try to make you feel as if you're not enough, and but you can't feed into it, and you gotta you gotta keep pushing, cause you gotta know that you're more than a conqueror. You gotta know that God has plans for you. You gotta understand that um, God's character is such that God wouldn't bring me out here um, to fall, and uh, to if God told me to go over there, that God's already prepared over there for when I get over there. And you got to be okay. And even when stuff doesn't look like, you're like, hmm, this doesn't look like what I thought it was going to look like. But God is like, I'm still here, and I still got you, so come on and go anyway um, so that you can see, like, um, what God has for for each of us. And so, um, you know, as we remind ourselves this way, um, a contented life doesn't come from just having the right circumstance. It comes from looking to God as our source of serenity. That um, that we can we can trust and we can believe that um, God has our back. That God has designed for us, and that God has literally set us up to run into people that are that have their that have have our purpose attached to their lives. And vice versa, same way that there's people around that have their destinies attached to our lives, and we're supposed to just do because it's the right thing to do. Um, yeah, it's cool that way that God has a way of using us in ways that we didn't know we were supposed to be used. Um, the guy from we're going to go on this, but the guy from Shower Up Chicago, they were supposed to be here today, but we canceled because last week it, the rain was so bad. And there was another um, ministry that was partnering with the, the two of us where they would take their um, van and they would go to the camp, the camps that are all over the place, and find people who needed help or needed a shower and drive them over here to be able to get it. Um, and so they canceled this morning. Um, but I was harassing Shower Up Chicago to get them out here. And what God did was once I finally connected with Shower Up Chicago, the guy from Shower Up Chicago needed help from me to be able to put the, his, the shower truck in other places. So after we had a conversation, I hooked him up with a, uh, 
CME pastor on the south side that's had a food pantry for 20 years. He parked out there now on Mondays. Monday was the first day he was out there. Um, I connected him to um, Reggie Sharp and Fellowship because they got something on Thursdays that they do. I think he's going over there tomorrow for the first time. And uh, to Pastor Robinson at St. James AME on the south side because they were really just on the north side and um, like in Humboldt Park. But that even in my the infancy of my role here, that God has placed enough in me to be able to still connect people. And um, I got to keep walking in that. Because in reality, that's what that's all God wants from all of us. So, um, yeah. Uh, next week, we will talk about... Um, we'll talk about um, depression and um, how to live... Uh, our lives when we're troubled, right? Um, and depression doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Uh, we all, I think, face situations and we all have moments. Um, I think we all have, as African Americans, black and brown people, we all have some level of post-traumatic stress disorder based on what we see. Um, parents, um, I had to talk to a pastor friend of mine yesterday who's got two little ones. Um, and so in response to what happened in Texas yesterday with the 18 kids and three teachers, I, I live, um, spend my life with the teacher. And so I worry about, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and sometimes as a pastor, it makes me wonder, uh, what are we doing? What can we do? How do we impact some change in a positive way? Um, because of, it just seems like it kind of it keeps happening, right? Folks in Buffalo, New York, and then a few days later in Texas. Um, so, um, yeah, sometimes you don't know what to do, right? Um, so we'll pray for the people in Buffalo. We'll pray for the people in Texas. Um, I'm going to pray for each of you. Uh, and if you have a, um, a prayer re request, those of you online, let me know, um, those of you in the room, if you have something that you want me to pray specifically for, uh, I'll do that. I also want to um, pray for Pastor C um, at DuPage. Um, she's having a hard time. She lost Bella, her um, her dog, and so her dog was 13 years old, and um, so she's having a hard time. Uh, those of us with fur babies um, get it, and... Um, Appreciate the love that we get from the from our animals, right? So, um, let's pray. God, we love you. We honor, adore you. We bless you. Magnify your holy name. We thank you for this day. We thank you for um, this lesson on contentment. We ask God that you would um, shift our perspective and help us to see where you are and how you're moving in our lives. God, we pray for uh, the families and the folks that got that were lost in Buffalo. Pray for the families who lost the 18 children and the families who had to, uh, those three teachers that uh, were, were taken out. That, God, you would um, heal our land, that you would heal uh, us, our society. For the violence that happens here in Chicago and across our city, both on south and west sides, um, as people search and seek for um, hope and change, God, that you would be with those folks, be with all of us, protect us, keep us, guide us, hold on to us is our prayer. Now, God, as we leave this place, but never your sight, uh, walk before us, God, so we never know what it's like to be lost, walk next to us. So I always know it's like to have companionship around us so we know what it's like to be covered and behind us because we understand the weapons do form, but if you're back there, they will not prosper. Now unto him, to able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his glory with exceeding joy. Be the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. And the people of God did say amen. Hey, listen, um, tomorrow uh, is going to be the first uh, choir rehearsal 
as we prepare for June, the June Rose concert. That's at 6.30 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. Uh, I believe it'll be downstairs because it's cooler down here right now. Um, related to the air conditioning project, um, seems like we're just waiting on um, the permit from the city. Um, so in the next two weeks, I anticipate us having to move worship down here um, as uh, we'll be under construction. Um, Y'all be careful. Uh, COVID is still out here. Wear your masks. Um, uh, don't don't congregate in large areas. If you haven't been vaccinated, um, consider that. Get boosted, um, and then. But we'll keep praying that God watch and keep you um, in all of your uh, comings and goings. And um, call somebody tonight. Send a text message to somebody who you know might be dealing with something. And just say hello. Um, I sent I sent past to see some eyeballs today. Just you know those eyeballs and looking that way, and she sent them back. And so then I was able just to say, "Hey, I'm just checking on you." Um, and a lot of us just need that somebody to check on us. So um, be well. See y'all. Love you. Bye. Thanks, brother.